Sponsored by Paradox Interactive. That's right, I did it again. After nine months locked in my cage, the war criminals at Paradox Interactive decided to fly me to Germany and dangle me from a crane while I play their new game, City Skylines 2. The trip was simple. Fly over to Munich, chill there for a couple of days, take a train to Cologne, do the crane thing, oh, oh lord, and then come home. So, let us begin. Day 1. I woke up at 2am after a whopping 3 hours and 47 minutes of incredibly rough sleep and completely forgot I was supposed to record a vlog. This would set the trend for the entire trip, where I would sleep an average of 4-6 to six hours a night and then spend all day, every day, walking. At 4.30am I arrived at the airport, which was pretty much completely empty. Even two-story Maccas with the conveyor belt thing was shut. No McDonald. I'm a fucking travesty. Aww. Now, the flight from Australia to Los Angeles is a pretty long flight. 13 hours on an aeroplane is a bit of a miserable experience, but to fly from Australia to Munich involves a 14 hour flight to Dubai, a little bit of United Arab Emirates McDonald, and then another 6 hour flight from there to Munich. Oh, and uh, Ben's here. Yes! I, I thought he lived in Benin. What the fuck is he doing in Munich? Should he be dying? Day 2, my first proper day in Germany, and 72 hours until perhaps the most frightening experience of my entire life. We had many plans for day 2 that included walking, walking, and would you look at that? More walking. Kinda of ridiculous that walkable cities mean you have to walk everywhere. What? Munich is a very pretty place, so we just sort of waddled around and took in the sights. We saw this church ring its bell. We took an U-Bahn to the city center. We visited Marienplatz and had a good look at the pretty buildings. And then we stumbled across some esteemed members <laughs> of the highly regarded Church of Scientology. We tried to walk past without saying anything, but uh, Hello. I, yeah, I simply could not resist the pull of Dianetics. We walked past like three separate bands playing the Game of Thrones theme on day two. Right? Only have the rights to this one song. I don't know why they. Just like Game of Thrones, I guess, and ended our day off by jumping in the Eisbach well, thing. Which is this massive river that you can float down for ages or even surf on it if you're cool. And for dinner, sausages and mass. Okay, sleepy time. Day 3. Another crap sleep and 48 hours until the incident. I began the day with some thoughtful, reflective study before taking the U-Bahn back to the downtown area to get some breakfast. There was no shortage of German restaurants to choose from. We absolutely could have immersed ourselves in the rich culture of the country, but nah. Pancake time. Once we were done, uh, they took about 40 minutes to bring us the bill and then like five wasps just pulled up. We then did some more urban exploration, checking out Odeonsplatz, a place where Nazi rallies were held to memorialize martyrs to their courts. Behind this building called the F Feldherrnhalle is this street called the Viscardigasse. There's a unique line of cobblestones on this street covered in a thin layer of bronze. This line of cobblestones memorializes people who took this route instead of going through the town square where they'd have to do the Nazi salute. History surrounds you absolutely everywhere in Germany. It's a unique reminder that even a place as civilized as this can devolve into madness and violence. Anyway, with that said, time for bus. Once we'd polished off our half litre of beer, we then took the tram to a literal palace. I couldn't possibly think of a better place to whip out the book and continue studying. Day 4 Cologne time. We needed to get to the convention center, also known as Köln Messe, where the incredible crane hanging stunt would take place. Cologne is about five hours away by train, so we hopped on a train, waited five hours, and arrived. Thus far, the trip had been genuinely excellent, aside from the horrific lack of sleep, a trend that would unfortunately continue. Immediately upon arriving in Cologne, we were greeted by the absolutely gigantic Kölner Dorm Cathedral. It's hard to show on camera just how fucking massive this place is. For some context, when they finished building it, it was the tallest building ever constructed for a few years and then it was beaten out by the Eiffel Tower. We didn't stop to explore it right away, but I will come back with more fun facts later. We then checked into the hotel and walked a very long way to the Köln Messe, where I would be dangled from a crane in less than 24 hours. We grabbed our passes, skedaddled back to the hotel where we took the first truly hard elevator photo of the trip, and then met up with a bunch of the other creators who would be stuck on the crane with us. Including my brother in froghood, ambiguous amphibian. Hey, hey! Who handed me this uncirculated $2 bill. Thanks. Once that was done, we got back to the hotel at 1am, and promptly passed the fuck out. Um. Um. Day 5. 
25. The day of the stunt. My inevitable death rapidly approaches. But first, breakfast. We took an Uber back to the Köln Messe, where we walked around the convention floor looking at all the new video games and getting free drinks from the private Red Bull Lounge. The show floor was full of about 50% simulator games and 50% really nice cars, including one made entirely of Lego, which was pretty sick, and my personal favorite, Tractor. And uh, Squid Games. I wanna take a photo of this Squid Game. Squid Games. Okay, no more stalling, brain time. Before the main event, we got to do a little practice run. They strapped us in, and up we went. Oh, oh. Oh lord. While we were doing said practice run, Tubbo managed to uh, drop his phone off the crane. Tubbo man, that's rough. No, <laughs> that's no rough. Fucking way. That's rough. Oh man. Well, that thing was loud when it hit. Yeah, I, I, I heard that. Oh no. Tubbo. Hey. Oh. I dropped the phone from 400 feet. Oh. And then, of course, the main event. I went live. Everyone on the crane went live, and we played some City Skylines 2, 50 meters up in the air. As you do. I really only had one goal going into the stream. Build a massive obelisk, touching the height limit of the game, and torture the people of Poopenbillen. I did this by making them commute all the way up and down to get basically anywhere. And so, before the crane even lifted us up, I built an obelisk. I haven't thought of this map before, let's see how high we can go. And then we do this and an incredibly windy road all the way up the side. My chat reminded me that there isn't really much point in having a beautiful, scenic obelisk if there's no parking yeah. lot at the top. Make the entire god dang city a parking lot. So, uh... Of course, we need a parking lot. Much better. I then added some single-family homes on top of the obelisk to keep everyone nice and spread out. The rest of it can be low-density housing because if I'm on a horrible affront-to-god obelisk, I want to be in a nice big house. This feels like a good time to remind you all to scroll down and click the link in the pinned comment. Think for just a second about how much fun you could be having if you two were playing City Skylines 2 when it comes out October 24th. Click the link. <clears throat> anyway, I had successfully gotten the citizens of Poopenbillen to travel up and down the obelisk. Workplace, very large parking lot. Where are they going? 95 Bourne Street. They better be going down the whole... <laughs> yes, down they go. But we were lacking in throughput. So I expanded the obelisk and built an airport. Airport. Airport on the top. Yeah. Making our approach. <laughs> yeah, we're making our approach to the tower. Go, go. They gotta make their approach. Paradox Interactive is hating me right now. I'm acting way too silly. Paradox Interactive, if you're watching this, please don't hate me. I'm just, just a little bit of a silly guy. And with that, the ascension began. Oh my god. This is where I start shitting bricks. Ow. Think about it, right? You're going on a crane. You're going 50 meters to the air. You want things to stay put. You want them to be wired down. Wireless mouse. Okay. Ah, fair enough. Now that the crane was in the air, some of the logistical issues with being 50 meters off the ground while playing a video game started to show up. Notably, the sun. <laughs> Wait. Is that the topic bot? The crane was constantly rotating, so for about half the stream I was basically blinded and completely unable to see the screen. Also, with a clear view of the skyline, some pesky Germans in my chat started to realize where I was, which is terrifying because I still had two more days here in Germany. The next order of business was to make Puppenvillen hold up to its name by drowning the city. Just gonna do this. This is gonna never have any consequences at all. In shit. And why not build a massive wall to block out the sun while I'm at it? Truly, a perfect utopia. A, uh... Utopia, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I here? Two hours later, the crane gently deposited us on the ground. Afterwards, I convened with the other creators and said things like, Yeah, that was high up, and yeah, crane. Uh, yeah. After that, we went to an after party hosted by YouTube Gaming where Ben just stole a lot of shit. Oh, I'm gonna take that as someone's well. But... <laughs> Once that was over, the group went to a pub, and I met Yogg's cast members Sips and Ravs, which was pretty cool. 2am rolled around, and the group exited the pub. Of course, us, wanting to keep the night going, took a quick trip to a club, which didn't let us in. And then an arcade, where me, Ben, Jack Manifold, and Tubbo took turns punching one of those punch machine things. Well, most of us punched it. Tubbo, it turns out, is more of a lover than a fighter. Finally, at around 4am, we got back to the hotel, and it was sleepy time. 
day six. Easily the most putrid wake up I have experienced in the past several months. Today we didn't have any particular obligations, so we started off with a trip inside the cathedral. This cathedral is ridiculous. So here are my top five Cologne Cathedral fans. Number five. It has the largest church bell in the entire world. The bell's name, Dicker Picker. Oh yep. Number four. Pretty much all of Cologne was destroyed in World War II, except for the cathedral. Number three. They started building it in the 1200s and finished building it 600 years later in the 1800s. Number two. It's the tallest Twin Spire church in the entire world. Number one. One of the stained glass windows that was destroyed in World War II was replaced with this a random arrangement of colored tiles. Why? The rest of the windows look absolutely incredible. They're like, they have all this, all this magic and then like all this intricate detail and then you just got this. You just, why? Moving on, back to the convention center. And by pure coincidence, we walked back past the crane just in time to see our friends Laith and Koi Fish absolutely shitting themselves as they got hoisted up. We got inside, collected our passes for Salabim Balasim and George Orwell went straight to the Red Bull Lounge for more free drinks and stared down at the peasants, presumably waiting for their favorite German YouTubers to come out. Which is kind of funny because I don't speak German and I had literally no idea who anyone was inside. With a few free drinks on us, we roamed the floor for a while and then did stuff for a while more. Went to a club and then bed at 5 a.m. Day seven, absolutely guttural 1 p.m. wake up. We went straight to the convention center, now with my friend Samuel in tow. I immediately brought him to the uh, cow, which was on display for Farming Simulator 2023. Now let me just say, the turnout for Farming Simulator at this convention was insane. Not only did they have all this farming stuff everywhere, like the tractor and the cow, but they also had the Farming Simulator League, which was doing some intense eSport activities like stacking bales of hay. The crowd was clearly enjoying this very much and had more energy than that nightclub that we went to the night prior. Genuinely remarkable. Germans will never cease to amaze me. Anyway, we mostly just meandered that day looking at booths at the convention and crossed this bridge covered in locks. I took some incredibly, incredibly hard photos of the cathedral on our way back and then we went to bed. Sleepy time. This is what efficiency looks like. <laughs> day eight, time to leave. I woke up at 5 a.m. and had to go straight to the airport to catch my flight. A five hour train back to Munich, six hours back to Dubai, a delay so I had to wait in Dubai for another eight hours, and finally, 14 hours all the way back home. Needless to say, that was pretty rough. In retrospect, Germany is very nice. The vibes were pleasant and all the people I met were great. Yeah, it was good. Okay, bye.